Good day to everyone. My name is Norman Uphoff, and I'm a professor of government and international agriculture at Cornell University in the USA. And I'm going to share some thoughts with you. I'm sorry I can't be there with you in person, or we might have more extended discussion, but I hope that these ideas will contribute to your deliberations. I want to challenge the presumed trade off that some make uh, between conserving wetlands on the one hand or restricting the use of pesticides in the watersheds that drain into them, and maintaining agricultural production on the other hand to meet people's food needs. I think that this trade-off is neither as real nor as binding as it is made out to be. This is not an argument for organic agriculture or against all use of agrochemicals in agriculture. Uh, I want to just put before you a proposition uh, which has, I think, very strong empirical and theoretical support. First, empirically, we know that Irrigated rice lands, uh, the runoff from them is the principal source of chemical accumulation in wetlands, and that rice production is the most, has the most impact on the health and hydrology of wetlands ecosystems of any crop. Uh, the good news is that if rice paddies are managed in more agroecologically supportive ways, uh, it's possible to grow rice crops that are more productive and also that are inherently more resistant to pests and diseases. So use of agrochemicals becomes less necessary, even uneconomic. Farmers can get more rice uh, with reduced and uh, even with no application of pesticides, which means that the water runoff from paddy fields can be less laden with toxic chemicals, and farmers having higher yields of less cost of production can have greater net income. The agroecological methodology which makes this possible is known as the System of Rice Intensification, SRI, developed in Madagascar. It's now been shown in almost 50 countries that using its methods uh, can uh, raise the productivity of the land, the labor, the water, and the capital that farmers invest in their rice production. Uh, the methods are very simple. You reduce plant population, no continuous flooding of rice, some active soil aeration, and building up the organic matter in the soil. These practices result in more uh, root growth, larger, healthier root systems, that confer more uh, protection on plants from both biotic and abiotic stresses. Uh, there was an evaluation done in Vietnam by the Integrated Pest Management Program of the Ministry of Agricultural Rural Development in 2005-2006, where they did comparison trials in eight provinces. What they found was that for the four leading pests and diseases that affect Vietnamese rice production, there was a 55% reduction in the spring season and a 70% reduction in the summer season in these major pests and diseases simply by changing the management of the plants, the soil, the water, and the nutrients. Uh, I'd like you to look at a picture which I was given by a farmer in East Java, Indonesia uh, last summer, showing her field on the right and neighbor's field on the left. Uh, the neighbor's field was with a modern variety, chemical fertilizer, uh, agrochemical protection. Hers on the right was grown organically with SRI methods using an indigenous variety. Uh, this picture was taken after the village had been hit by a brown plant hopper attack and then hit by a tropical storm. Several years ago, the China National Rice Research Institute in Hangzhou uh, did two years of evaluation of SRI methods using two hybrid varieties and standard methodology for comparing yields. If you look at the graph, uh, what they call standard rice management was with fertilizer, close planting, flooding, uh, and uh, chemical protection. Uh, what they call new rice management used mostly SRI practices. And what was found was that the yields were as much as two and a half tons per hectare more when you had the less seeds, less water, less fertilizer, less chemical protection. So uh, this is research done by China's ERI, uh, the article was co-authored by the Director General of CNRRI. Um, this is now well understood by Chinese scientists and in other uh, countries as well. Um, the theoretical underpinnings for this, I would uh, point to the work of Dr. Francis Chabusso, a plant pathologist who for many years was in the uh, National Institute of Agricultural Research, INRA, in France, looking at the causes of insect pests, bacteria, fungus, uh, vitamin viral uh, damage to crops, and he developed the theory of what he called trophobiosis, 
which attributes uh, crop damage uh, to the way in which the plant's metabolism is adversely affected by the applications both of nitrogen and fertilizer and be especially chlorinated uh, pesticides so plants are more vulnerable to insects, bacteria, fungi, even viruses. This helps to explain a, rela a relationship which was reported some years ago by my Cornell colleague, Professor David Pimentel, who observed that in the United States agriculture over the roughly 50 years after World War II, we saw a 14-fold increase in the application of pesticides to our crops in the U.S. At the same time, the percentage of crop lost to pests went from 7% to 13%, which was almost a doubling. The evidence for SRI and for other agroecological approaches like conservation agriculture and integrated pest management is growing all the time. Governments in China, India, Indonesia, Cambodia and Vietnam, where two-thirds of the world's rice is produced, uh, have all of them evaluated SRI in their own terms and have begun promoting it. Uh, two of the most eminent rice scientists in the world, Dr. M.S. Swaminathan, Professor Yuan Long Ping, have done their own evaluations of SRI and have recommended its use in their own countries, India and China. So I think that if we think about these opportunities, uh, we can reduce water requirements at the same time the food production is enhanced. This will make a very big contribution to the preservation of wetland ecosystems. Also, by growing plants that are more robust and resilient to the biotic and abiotic stresses, we'll be better able to cope with the biotic and abiotic stresses that are going to come with climate change. And in the process, farmers should be able to have better incomes uh, from the rice production, so they have incentive to adopt these new practices. If anyone has doubts about these uh, alternative methods, about what I've been saying, uh, I would refer them to the website that we maintain at Cornell through our Sri Rice uh, Secretariat. Uh, its uh, uh, URL is on the screen. And I would certainly encourage people to read Francis Chabrousseau's book on how to grow healthy crops. Uh, it's available now in both French and English. So this really is a win-win-win-win opportunity which can help our wetlands but also help farmers and the environment in general.